theory behind it. I'm asking, so you, you already know, you already know, but so if you already know and you're asking the question, I can only assume that you're asking this question so everybody else can be edified. So close your mouth and let the Bible speak. Leviticus chapter 19, come on. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. How do we prostitute our daughters today and cause them to be whores? How do we do that today? This is a law. You know who you're supposed to learn that from? Your father. But you know what fathers do today? Do you have children? All right, do you have any daughters? Do you let them wear pants? You don't let them wear pants? They've never worn pants. But, so you don't let them wear pants, but they do. Your children have freedom of choice? At what age did they gain freedom of choice? At what age did your children gain freedom of choice? Bring it out. Tell me. Tell me what age you gave them freedom of choice. Okay, so from one years old up until what age? Yes. What from one year your daughter, from one years old up until what age did they have to listen to you? And then they got freedom of choice. When did they get freedom of choice? That's my question. So you listen, listen. So here's my point. The, I'm asking a question now. The reason we have women out here dressed out. like harlots Bring today is because we have fathers that do not keep this law right. right here. Read it again. Come on. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. If you was a real man, you're not going to let your daughter come out dressed like any one of these women out here. If you was a real man, you're not going to let that happen. So how did our sisters get like this today? Most of them didn't have a father to instruct them in righteousness. If they did, they wouldn't be out here like this today. You understand? They would not be out here like this today. No, I am right. You can disagree all you want, but we're reading the Bible, and you don't keep this law. If you, I keep this law. You understand? My daughters ain't going to be out here like this. My wife ain't going to be out here like this. They wife not going to be out here like this. We're cleaning up our community. You understand? Read it again. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. You cannot allow your daughter to come outside with pants on. They're revealing. They're immodest. You know, they grip your hips. When the sisters put pants on, what they do in the mirror? What they what they look at in the mirror? They try to go like this, right? You know what I'm talking about? They trying to see what they butt look like. Am I right or am I wrong? Right. Am I right? Your daughters probably did that if you let them wear pants, sir. Right. You understand? Your daughters probably did that. I don't know. I don't know. I can I can just assume by the general idea of what I no, I can I can look around. How many people do you see out here with pants on? How many do you see with modest dresses on? You count count all the modest dresses for me and then get back with me. Let me know how many you find. Alright? Count count all the modest dresses. All right, listen, the, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. This is the problem with our people today, right? We're individuals. You got to get out of that individual mindset. I didn't come out here to teach to this individual brother. I came out here to save a whole nation. You understand? Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Read what you got. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7, and verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. So God says that a whole nation is holy. You understand? How do you get a holy nation? You got to take one individual and they have to do what? Keep God's commandments. Then when you get a whole group of people to keep God's commandments, guess what? You got a commandment-keeping group, don't you? Right? That's how you build a commandment-keeping community. You understand? That's how you clean this up. Not You got to clean it up one person at a time teaching God's laws. Come on. For thou unholy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee. The Lord chose you, right? The Lord chose the so-called black women, the so-called Hispanic women. You understand? The so-called Native American women, right? To not wear pants, to dress modestly, to be beautiful, to respect yourself. That's what the Lord said. But our father's not teaching us that today. You know what our fathers are doing today? Our fathers are giving our little girls. Girls, freedom of choice. Are you, are you serious? Do you give your daughter freedom of choice? Seven-year-old, does your seven-year-old have a freedom of choice? Does your 13-year-old have a freedom of choice? Your, your 16-year-old, they got a freedom of choice? All right, so if they say, oh, daddy, I think I'm gay now, they can just do that at 13 years old? That's that. So this is the problem with our communities today. Come on, you cannot be a father and allow your 13, 16-year-old daughter to say, Daddy, I think God made a mistake. I'm gay. 
I shouldn't be a a, 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 a black daughter. I, I'm really a Chinese boy. A, 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 you can't make that decision as an adolescent. It doesn't make sense. But did we give our children this power today? It don't make sense. It don't make sense. I, I hear what you're yeah, I yes, I had a freedom of choice, and it did not work out well for me or all the or all the women that I dealt with wrong in the world, all the men I dealt with wrong in the world. Yeah, it ain't work out well for me like that, right? But you know what I was missing? A father to instruct me in righteousness, and that's who. That's what we're being for our whole community now. You understand? That's what we're being for our whole community right now. Come on, seven and six from the top. We want, we want this out of you. And it's not. It's only going to come from keeping God's commandments. Read what you got. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. What's going to make you special? What's going to make you special? Yes, to God. What's going to make you special to God? No, that's wrong. That's wrong. Give me uh, that in Wisdom of Solomon or Psalms 135 and 4. Either one. All right. What's going to make you holy? What's going to make you special? We're going to show you according to the Bible. Yes. Yes. Both. Both. What's going to make you special and what's going to make you holy according to the Bible? You know what I want? Psalms chapter 135, try verse 4. Is that what I want? Yep, read that. Come on. The book of Psalms chapter 135 and verse 4. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his particular treasure no, peculiar read it right for the lord have chosen jacob unto himself and israel for his peculiar treasure so the lord said that you should be his peculiar treasure that means you're just not any treasure didn't get wisdom of solomon 1906 you're just not any treasure to god he said, I need you to be a special treasure. I need you to be a peculiar treasure. How do you become that? It's not by following after whatever you think in your mind. It's not by doing that. God gives you the Bible to be a roadmap for you, to show you just exactly what you need to do. But you got to open it up, read it, and believe it. Then you got to pray to the Lord. Then you got to apply the things that you read. That's how you grow spiritually. You understand? We want all our people to grow into a holy nation. Read what you got. A peculiar nation. You understand? A special nation. Now, what's going to make you peculiar and special and holy? Read what you got. The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 19 and verse 6. Come on. For the whole creature in his proper kind was fashioned again anew, serving the peculiar commandment. This is you. This is you. You was created to serve the peculiar commandments. That's what you was created to serve. Read it again. For the whole creature. What's going to make this creature special, peculiar, and holy? What's going to make them special, peculiar, and holy? You know what is going to make them special, peculiar, peculiar, and holy? You telling your father or you telling your daughter as a father that she cannot wear pants. Because the Bible says she cannot wear pants. That's a peculiar commandment. You understand? Another peculiar commandment is you not allowing your daughter to come outside with spandex on, with underwear on, with a bra on. You understand? Not to allow her to have a freedom of choice. You understand? That's that's what's gonna make you a peculiar father. Do you want to be a peculiar father? Do you want to be a peculiar father? Do you want to be a peculiar father? I'm gonna show you how to be a peculiar father. Listen, read. For the whole creature in its proper kind was fashioned again anew, serving the peculiar the peculiar commandment. You gotta serve the peculiar commandments to be special to the Lord. There's no other way. You're not gonna you're not gonna become special to the Lord without keeping his commandments. Alright? You're gonna be just like everybody else. Come on. That were given unto them that thy children might be kept without hurt. Do you want your children to be kept without hurt? You know what type of hurt comes from allowing your son, your daughters to come out here with those type of shorts on, with those with, with dressed in that manner? You know what type of hurt comes? You tell me. You tell me what type of hurt comes. You think she's going to attract good company or bad company dressed like that? No, no, no. Let's say you trained her mind in full righteousness, and then you let her come outside with a G-string and a bra on. You think she's going to attract good company or bad company? You understand? She's going to attract bad company, brother. You know that. Stop resisting the law, man. This, this, this is the only thing that can save you, bro. It's the only thing that can save you. These commandments right here. So we answered your question. All right. Leviticus 19.29 was the answer to your question. The fathers 
The fathers have to stop allowing the daughters to dress like harlots. The fathers have to be there to protect their daughters by teaching them God's commandments. That's how. That's how. Through their mother wives and just saying, here's the God's commandment, this is what you need to do. Boom. Isaiah 58 and 1. All right? We got to teach righteousness according to the Bible. All right? Noah was a preacher of what? Noah was a preacher of what? We, g give me that in First Peter chapter 3. Is that what I want? Give me that in First Peter chapter 3. Noah was a preacher of what? What did he do? All right, I'm going to tell you. You just listen, all right? I, I'm going to tell you. This is, this is how we fix our community today, by rehearsing the righteous acts of our forefathers. That's how we do it. All right? First Peter, you got what I want? The book of the book of Second Peter, chapter two and verse five. And spare not the old world. Now that old world consisted of what you see right here. All right, this is the old world all over again. Why? Because there's nothing new under the sun. So the same spirits is out here reveling, wilding, you understand, getting married, getting high, getting drunk, all right, worshiping all types of gods, including including the black woman. She's become a god for our black men today. All right, the same things are going on right now. You know what Noah did? He came out to preach that this world is going to be destroyed. It's going to be destroyed with water. It's going to be a flood, and it killed everybody. You know how many people were saved? Huh? Huh? You know how many people were saved from the flood? All right. Shem, Ham, Japheth, Noah, and their wives. That's it. That's eight souls. Everybody else died. That God that you say loves everybody killed everybody on the world. For eight people that was keeping his commandments. They were the only ones preserved. The same thing is going to happen again. We coming out here just like Noah to be what? Read. And spare not the old world, but save Noah and the eight person. A, a preacher of righteousness. What was he? A preacher of righteousness. So Noah was a preacher of righteousness. That's you right. say, how are we going to clean up our communities? Well, we, sir, we got to be preachers of what? Righteousness. Get righteousness for me. Read it Please. Up. Read. Listen, listen. What did the Bible say? Do you believe what do you believe the Bible? Alright, did the Bible say be a teacher or a preacher of righteousness? Which one did it say? It said be a preacher. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be a preacher of are you learning, sister? Are you learning? Sister, are you learning from us? Are we teaching right now? So what problems do you got with us preaching and teaching, brother? We're, we're, we're preaching and we're teaching, brother. All right. So stop resisting the law. Don't resist it. Just receive it. You see the sister? She's sitting down. She's humble. She's receiving the law. All right? She's receiving the law right now. I need you to do the same thing. All right? So we said Noah was a preacher or a teacher of righteousness. Which one? What did the Bible say? Thank you. And hold on. I understand that, and I'm teaching. So you don't have a point right now. All right? Listen good. Just close your mouth and listen good. All right? Noah was a preacher of righteousness. What's righteousness according to the Bible? So Noah was a preacher of righteousness. You understand that? Now we got to find out what righteousness was according to the Bible. Read what you got. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25. And it shall be a righteousness. It should be what? A righteousness. This is what Noah was a preacher of. Does everybody understand that? Now what is the righteousness that Noah was preaching? Come on. If we observe to do all his commandments. All what? All these commandments. All what? All these commandments. Now, what are we talking about? The woman and how she shall not wear that which pertains to a man. You have to preach that to clean your community up. That's right. what Noah did. That's how he cleaned the community up. Do you think their wives, I'm talking about the wives of Shem, Ham, Japheth, and Noah, you think their wives wore pants? Yes or no? No. You think they? You think Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth allowed their, 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 their children to have a freedom of choice? The children that they had, you think they gave them a freedom of choice after they saw the, the whole damn world destroyed? You think they thought God was playing about his law? You think he thought he was playing about that? So let me ask you, do you still think your children should have a freedom of choice at seven years old? No, they shouldn't. You're, you're not a preacher of righteousness if you allow your children to have a freedom of choice at seven years old. You're not a preacher of righteousness. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission.
Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth.